What is going on, everyone? Welcome to the Laugh to Learn podcast, your weekly source, as always, for a comedic spin on all of the goings on in the world. My name is still Jacob Paveo, haven't changed it yet, and I come to you from the Great White North every Wednesday afternoon, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, fresh for download to listen to at work the entire world around. If it's your first time here, welcome to the show. Thank you for checking it out. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you like it. If you're over on YouTube, smash that bell. Uh, If you're listening to it somewhere without a subscribe button or a bell, go somewhere with a subscribe button or a bell. That way you can hopefully come back each and every week to join us. Also, please share the podcast on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram right now by taking a screenshot of it playing on your smartphone device. Of course, we also come to you from all smart home devices. You can ask your home Google devices, your home Amazon devices. I'm trying to avoid saying directly the things that make them pop off. But you can ask those devices to play the podcast, and they should do so willingly. As well, podcast merch can be purchased over at www.laughtolearnpodcast.com slash store. I'm actually wearing the hat right now, and I posted a picture of myself wearing the hat on Instagram today. Of course, you can check out all of my social media feeds in the description for this podcast, as well as a final, well, I guess second final reminder, we will not be posting an episode the week of Christmas, nor the week of New Year's, so that is December 23rd and December 30th. There will be no podcast this the, or the, towards the end of this month, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, of course, Christmas times typically downloads drop way down low. You guys don't want to listen to me. You want to usually hang out with your families, but this time we're going to social distance, you know, hang out with our families on Zoom chat and whatever, and we will get into Christmas a little bit later because this week there was another significant amount of information related to aliens released. And of course, there are strange metal objects appearing around the globe. So I ask you folks... Is this it? As well, there are a number of scandalous things to discuss surrounding the vaccine distribution for COVID-19, of course, around the globe. But first, let's talk about how Christmas will look and all of the anxieties that we're all sharing coming into this holiday season, because this is the Laugh to Learn podcast. Hey, check it out. It's the Laugh to Learn podcast. received a text message earlier today from someone I work with and they were replying to a, uh, a situation and the text read and I quote sick end quote uh, meaning like a good thing right so then we had a whole discussion about whether or not sick is still acceptable in 2020, or if it is now considered not politically correct, because, of course, you know, getting sick in 2020, not all that sick, you know what I'm saying? So, I know I talked about this on the podcast back in June, but we never really had a definitive answer. And so, I started polling random people, and by that I mean I asked, like, two other people, like, hey, would you still use sick in conversation, or is that now considered incorrect? Ultimately, I basically don't have my answer yet. So, when I analyze my day-to-day conversation, I use the word sick all the time, which should probably come as no surprise to people, but I literally use it constantly like something happens i'm like oh that's sick someone's like oh you should do that yeah that would be sick like i don't know it's just regular vernacular for me so i don't know if i need to change 
I might be offending people left, right, and center, and they're just not saying anything to me. And the last thing you want to do during a pandemic is be walking in a Walmart, offend someone by saying the word sick, which they might, like, consider as bad as the N-word. Like, I don't know where we're at with this, right? I don't know. Maybe, like, your grandmother just died of COVID, and you're like, whoa, sick? Not cool, man. You know what I mean? And then I'm in Walmart, and I'm going to have someone throw a pineapple at me. I don't want to get hit with a pineapple. So I need to figure this out. We need to decide, as a podcast community, if the word sick is still applicable for usage in the positive term that we all associate with California surfers. Okay, I'm just throwing it out there before we get into things. Okay, now, I want to know for you guys, or I want to discuss what Christmas is going to look like for everyone out there. So I've already talked a little bit about, whoa, I keep hitting the mic stand. I'm talking with my hands too much. I've talked uh, the past few weeks about what Christmas is going to look like in my life, where uh, we are going to be paying to have private testing done. Um, Yes, I'm a property owner. I'm a landowner, a one percenter, not literally, but that's what people say on the internet if you own property you're like a one percenter <laughs> definitely not uh but uh yes i'm paying 180 dollars to have a covid test done and then i'll get same day results um that might actually there are probably some people listening who have to pay for covid tests anyways uh here you can do free tests but you need like symptoms and stuff like that which um so yeah as of right now anyways uh the plan is to go to a, a clinic and pay for a test to be done. So I'll have my results and uh, I can then hang out uh, starting next week with my brother and his family. Uh, and I can hang out with my niece who I haven't been able to hang out with ever because she was born in September under all this craziness. And I haven't had a test. And I get, the doctor said like, you can't have a baby around people who aren't tested and whatnot. So that's what we're doing. Uh, and then uh, closer to Christmas, uh, anyone who's coming over uh, has to both isolate and get a test in order to hang out with us. Um, if I haven't said it on the podcast, the new the new space where the studio is and my new house and everything, uh, my brother and his family are also living there uh, in a different unit. Obviously, I'm not, not moving in with my brother at this point in life. Uh, but, or I guess my brother's not moving in with me. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so they are living in a different unit in the house. Um, so this way we can have, uh, Christmas together, uh, and it's going to be pretty sick. Uh, See, I just did it. (laughs) I did that completely by accident, to be honest with you. Um, but anyways, uh, Christmas is going to be swell, and, Yeah, I think it's important, though, to start talking about the anxieties that people are having surrounding Christmas. So, you know, we've canceled, like, essentially, even though I'm talking about spending Christmas with uh, my brother and his family and my parents are going to be there and uh, my brother's girlfriend's family, like, her parents are going to be there. Um, She doesn't have other siblings. Uh, That's going to be it. Um, it's just going to be us and, um, you know, we've canceled any other Christmas plans with other people. Um, there's, there's no plans outside of that, you know, so it's much less of a Christmas, like seeing your brother on Christmas is still like, you know what I mean? In normal times, uh, like I would see him on like a Tuesday. (laughs) So, uh, you know, to say like, oh, we're going to hang out at Christmas. It's not really, uh, uh, a Christmassy thing. But we've had to cancel all the regular Christmas plans. So it kind of sucks in one sense because you're not going to have that usual family Christmas, right? Or at least I'm not. And I think a lot of people are really panicking about this. Like they really don't know there's a mosquito flying around. It is December, bro. Go to bed. What the hell? What was I just saying? (laughs) Uh, uh, wow. Literally a mis- a mosquito just flew past me, like, in December in southern Ontario. Central Ontario, I guess, technically. Uh, where it is minus four outside and snowing right now. Not sure 
what I did to deserve this kind of negativity in my life. But as I was attempting to say, um, you know, a, a lot of people are at the point where they don't really know what to do with their holiday plans, talking with friends and stuff about it. Um, some people have canceled things altogether. Others are doing like kind of what I'm doing where they're getting together with their immediate family and anyone who doesn't live together, they're all getting tested. Um, for me, it's kind of weird because it's like I'm moving into my house and I'm getting tested to move into my, you know, my new house. Uh, so that's kind of a weird aspect of it. Um, and really what it comes down to is there is no right answer, but there are certainly wrong answers, right? Uh, like, I'm just going to tell you straight up, you should not be getting together with groups of people, um, you know, in excess of like like 10, 10 plus people. There are literally places, especially around here, where it's illegal to do so. You know what I mean? So it's like you cannot be doing that stuff. You have to be avoiding those sorts of scenarios. On top of that, um, you know, people are testing positive around us constantly. Like, I'm sure we're getting to the point now where a lot of listeners, like myself, are finding out about uh, different friends testing positive. Uh, maybe family members, uh, you know, s like extended family and stuff like that. Positive tests are happening constantly and everywhere, not just in densely populated cities. They're happening like I know someone who lives in the middle of nowhere who tested positive recently. So it's and like they do not travel for work, like nothing like that. Like it's it's literally this thing is just absolutely everywhere and it spreads so easily and we need to do all that we can to protect ourselves and our families and it just although it really sucks and a, a lot of people really enjoy uh like the holiday season and stuff like that personally the holidays fine you know what i mean i would much prefer it if we got legitimate time off work or anything uh because I usually work, I think I am even this year, uh, December 24th. Uh, so for me, Christmas is like a weekend in the middle of the week. Uh, that just means that I have a lot more work to do when I come back because business in the food industry doesn't stop. Um, so it would definitely be nice if things would kind of shut down a little bit. Um, but um, typically, you know, a, a lot of people derive a lot of personal meaning uh, from from those family relationships and from the ability to physically get together with people. And I think that that has to be understood and respected by everyone. But at the same time, we have to be realistic about what we're doing with ourselves because you don't want to be that person who puts someone else in a compromised position, right? You don't want to be the person who didn't know you were sick and showed up at the family event. You know what I mean? And like, I, I, I had a conversation with someone that was, uh, I wouldn't use the word contentious, but I was just kind of baffled by what they were saying because their argument was, well, if I'm already sick, then that means my kids would already be sick. So like, I'm fine to go. And it's like, but, the other people there aren't sick. You know what I mean? It's not all about you and your your kids and your spouse or whatever, right? It's about the collective where it's like, if you're the sick family, you don't want to get all the other families sick. And if you're not the sick family, you don't want to go hang out with a sick person or a sick family because then you're going to spread it to all your non-sick friends when you come back. So during this period, I'm, I've I've said it to a few people, I think, off air. I don't think I've said it here. I really do think you're going to see a massive shutdowns um, globally because out of fear uh, of, you know, travel and um, events happening and stuff like that, I wouldn't be surprised to see lockdowns spread here in Ontario right now. Basically just Toronto and Peel, which is just outside of Toronto, are locked down. I wouldn't be surprised to see that spread to a much wider area. I wouldn't be surprised to see places like Los Angeles, New York, and Chicago locked down completely because the idea of traveling outside of the, or, or, or even within these significantly impacted, densely populated areas, 
you know, you go in for the day to hang out with one group of people and then you come out and it's much easier to infect people when you leave the lockdown areas again. And that's really the fear because when you're living out in the middle of nowhere, right? Which kind of I do right now. <laughs> so there, you know what I mean? Like if I look out the windows, I can't see my neighbors. Actually, I can right now because it's winter and there's no leaves on the trees. But in the summer, I there is no window I can look out of and see one of my neighbor's houses. Um, because of that, it's much easier to kind of have the impression, I guess, or the interpretation that you're fine here. Like the, the virus can't spread here. There's no one around here to spread, right? I go to the store, I might see two or three people inside, you know? So realistically, it's much easier to convince yourself that there's nothing going on. There's no problem to be had. The concern is you're going to go into a densely populated area for one day, hang out with people who at the time aren't sick, leave, and then find out four or five days later that you were exposed to it. And now for four or five days, you've been going around your neighborhood spreading it. This is really the issue with what when they call like a super spreader holiday, which is what the U.S. is referring to Thanksgiving. That's the problem. The problem isn't that like, you know, if, if you live in your town and your family live in your town and your friends or whatever and you're going to each other's houses, that doesn't actually cause a super spreader. It's not smart. But it doesn't cause a super spreader. What causes a super spreader is when one family goes to a different area, contracts it, and then brings it into their home area. So those are the things we need to avoid. And although it's certainly, certainly stressful, um... I would go so far as to say it's it's very difficult for people um, to to have these sorts of um, or, or this lack of direct communication with their families, and it sucks. So what I would instead say is, rather than focusing on like, don't hang out with your family this Christmas or whatever, instead pivot, right? Pivot to getting together with friends virtually, right? Reach out to people and be like, hey, none of us can do anything, right? Obviously, everyone or most people have plans for like Christmas Day or, or Christmas Eve or whatever with their immediate family that they live with or roommates or whatever the case may be. But, you know, on Boxing Day, no one can go shopping in the mall, right? That's not going to be a thing this year on Boxing Day. Pretty much no matter where you live. I guarantee you malls and stores are, although they want to be open, they're going to be told they can't open Boxing Day. I would not be surprised. For New Year's this year, there is not going to be like a big New Year's thing, right? So you maybe want to do like a digital thing with your friends to celebrate New Year's together. Those are the sorts of things we need to start looking to because we can't just leave others isolated. Some of us, like myself, are lucky enough to be in a situation where we're gonna have people around us right um like when i i live here right now there's people that live in this house when i leave here i'm moving into my other house and like i said my brother and his family all live there so there's three other people who live in that house who i see all the time and i have my dog and i don't need no nothing else you know i don't need nobody else <laughs> so uh it's kind of privileged in a way where oops where a lot of people a lot of people are actually alone and we need to keep those folks in mind and not leave anyone behind in this situation because you don't want someone having negative impacts surrounding a holiday especially a holiday like christmas right it's not like easter where it's like oh we didn't get to have easter remember when people were upset that we didn't get to have easter christmas is canceled okay we need to work together and we need to pull everyone around us each each and every one of our friends and family we need to help pull everyone through if you live in some part on social media or reddit or something you will know that there has recently been a surge of these strange metal sculptures, metal objects placed around the world that then disappear within a few days of them being recognized or noticed. So I wanted to touch on it briefly 
because, of course, we've talked about aliens a whole lot on this podcast. And I just wanted to bring it up because there is now a significant theory, which I do not support, but I wanted to mention, uh, that people are saying this is a sign uh, that alien civilization is coming. There are also people who are saying that this is some sort of big marketing plan. Um, at the same time as all of this, uh, if for those of you who listen to Rogan's podcast, he did uh, another episode specifically on aliens with some filmmakers who have uh, a, a film out right now. It's available on YouTube, which I haven't watched yet, so I'm not gonna like. I'm not going to advertise for it because I have no idea if it's good or not. I just listened to the episode of Rogan's podcast yesterday. Um, but it's definitely strange timing because uh, there are some significant files that are being released again soon in regards to uh, some military involvement and uh, military questions uh, towards uh, what may be alien life. So just a really strange thing that I wanted to bring up because if you're not aware of it, you have to look up these metal sculptures. It started with one in, I believe, um, uh, it was either Utah or Arizona. It was in, somewhere near the Grand Canyon. Um, I think it was Utah. Uh, and essentially, um, yeah, there was this strange metal sculpture that a bunch of biologists saw out of a helicopter. Um, and then some explorers uh, were able to find it on Google Images, uh, and it's been there for at least four years, um, and no one knew about it, um, and then now it's gone. <laughs> so did someone come and take it? Um, maybe, um, you know, but then identical sculptures started showing up around the world, like there's one in Scotland is the most recent one I've seen, but they've been everywhere, all over Europe, uh, other places in the U.S., so this could be some sort of advertising. Uh, I did see a bunch of people thinking that it was advertising for a video game, um, but I, I think um, Cyberpunk, uh, I think it's called, which comes out tomorrow. But it seems like that's not the case um, because it's like a f it's it just doesn't match the game itself. Like I I went down a rabbit hole. Okay, of <laughs> like oh, is this what it is? Some sort of weird super intelligent marketing campaign where they put something in the desert uh four years ago when they start making the game and then because uh, that's the thing is they started making this game for four or five years ago so they put this thing in the desert and then you know four years later they accidentally find you know someone accidentally finds it and then it starts popping up around the world but it doesn't seem like that's the case it doesn't really match uh, like, there's a lot of strange red flags in it. Um, and then, like, the you know, people are trying to figure out if it is an ad campaign, what it could be for. And it doesn't really line up with any big products, at least that we know of. Um, so, honestly, at this point, I don't think anyone really knows what's going on, what these things are. Is it a joke? You know what I mean? Did it happen in one place and now people are just, as a joke, putting up these sculptures that match, that look exactly like it elsewhere? There's really no way to know. Um, so I'm just going to leave it at that. If you haven't yet, listen to Rogan's episode uh, from a few days ago. It was really good. Um, and yeah, it uh, they might be out there, folks. All right, finally this week, there are some vaccine uh, scandals is the word I chose to use for it because there's a lot of negative stories now coming out uh, surrounding vaccines and vaccine distribution. So the first one that I want to talk about is the one that I think is the most important because it seems like there's a lot of um, misconstrued parts to this story. So you may have heard that in the UK, they have legally protected Pfizer from any lawsuits related to the vaccine. So the UK is using the Pfizer vaccine. Of course, if you want to know more about the vaccines, uh, their effectiveness, the different companies that are out there producing them, that episode I recorded two weeks ago, last week's episode focus, focused rather specifically, specifically and focused all in one word, it's focused specifically on one uh, thing, and that was the distribution of the vaccines. So all that being said, the UK has chosen Pfizer's vaccine. Uh, they've purchased it, and I think it's already being rolled out. Actually, for sure, it's already being rolled out, and some people are already getting 
um, the vaccine given to them, um, which is a good thing. And the UK has protected Pfizer from any lawsuits. So up front, a lot of people have been upset by this because it's like, uh, you know what I mean? Pfizer kind of seems to have maybe rushed the vaccine. And now you're going to say that if I take the vaccine and get sick from it or have some sort of negative side effect that I can't sue the company. So you're protecting Pfizer over the UK citizens. Well, actually, even here in Canada, um, even in the US, companies like Pfizer are somewhat protected. So really, if the it, here in Canada we have uh, the CFIA who control our um, medications and whatnot, uh, they also control, it's the Canadian Food and Drug Administration. Um, and in the US, you have the USDA, uh, uh, the, um, uh, uh, oh my God, I can't think of the name of it. It's not the USDA. Uh, either way, it doesn't matter. Uh, you have, you have federal, I know people are yelling at the, uh, at the whatever headphone, speaker, stereo, TV, whatever you're listening from. People are yelling at me right now. Uh, the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. Thank you, brain. Uh, so in the, U- in the U.S., they have the FDA. These are all government organizations that approve of these vaccines, right? So there's all this different testing and stuff they have to do. That actually helps to significantly protect companies like Pfizer. So realistically, the only way, it's a little different in the US, you have a little bit more flexibility, but the simplest way to explain it is to say that it works the same almost everywhere. And pretty much the only time you can well, you can file any lawsuit you want, but the only time you actually stand a chance of winning a lawsuit is if you have a bad dosage, a bad batch of the vaccine. So it's basically like instead of getting the vaccine, they gave you heroin. <laughs> you know what I mean? Then you have a lawsuit. But if the vaccine just makes you sick, that's a common side effect. It's a listed side effect. So if the side effect is listed, how can you, you knew the risk when you took it? It's not a forced vaccine, and even if it was, then you definitely couldn't sue. So, realistically, the UK just took an extra step to to not congest their system with people saying, oh, I had to get the vaccine, and now I got sick, because that's what's going to happen. Um, and in other places like here, you already can't file those lawsuits, because you'd have to, in Canada, uh, file a lawsuit against the CFIA, the Canadian... Um, uh, uh, sorry, um, yeah, you would, ha- you would have to file a lawsuit with the government agency in charge of approving these drugs. So, uh, what I mean, ultimately, it's not really something to be concerned with at all. Um, it's not unprecedented, it's not unusual, and it's just a way for um, the government to manage cases going through their court system that are going to be thrown out anyways. So the next thing that I want to talk about is Donald Trump, because Donald Trump makes it number one this week in stupid because he quite publicly turned down a significant order for vaccines. Um, Like I think it was like a million doses that he could have placed an order for, which he didn't have to pay for. So the idea was he could have promised to buy them if the vaccine was effective and then decided not to if he didn't want to. This was back in the summer. Now that we know, this was with Pfizer, just to be clear. Now that we know Pfizer's vaccine is working and it's kind of the number one choice that people are going with, Donald Trump wants to buy those vaccine doses and Pfizer has already sold them. (laughs) Obviously, because other countries, you know, Pfizer then went to other countries and said, you know, we're going to have like a million doses. How many do you want? So, for example, Canada just bought a little bit more than 200,000 of these doses of the Pfizer vaccine to be given to us in December. We weren't supposed to be getting any vaccine until January. Now we're getting some in December because Trump turned down this purchase. Now... (laughs) As part of Trump turning down this purchase, I should say. Now, Trump is trying to force Pfizer to give the U.S. government and U.S. states those doses of the vaccine by signing an executive order which states that American companies producing the COVID-19 vaccine 
have to give the drug to Americans first. The only problem is that is legally not a thing the president can do. He turned down a deal with Pfizer. He turned it down. And now that Pfizer is working, he's like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. And he's trying to legally force them to break their deal with a bunch of other countries, which, of course, they are not going to do. They can't do that. The president can't force them to do that. So ultimately, Donald Trump ended up missing out on a significant number of vaccine doses, which would have come in the month of December, all because he kind of tried to hedge his bets and put money on a bunch of different companies instead of putting it all on one, which works. It makes sense. No one's blaming him for what he did in the summer. If you want to look into it, it actually makes a lot of sense. What doesn't make sense is he hedged his bets and you know he ordered some from Pfizer and then he ordered some from basically every other company that was producing vaccines. Now he wants to forget any of those other companies ever existed and just be like, no, we, we just want Pfizer's. And it doesn't work like that. So, uh, yeah, he passed this weird executive order. He's spending up. It costs a lot of money to do that, too. So he's kind of wasting taxpayer money. But anyways, Donald Trump screwed up. Uh, surprise, surprise. Finally, Doug Ford, the premier of Ontario, of course, uh, premier, uh, very similar to um, the governor of states. Um, down south of the border. So the Premier Doug Ford, uh, of course, brother to crack-smoking Mayor Rob Ford, hopes to send staff into states with the vaccine currently to learn from their distribution processes. Now, people are kind of pissed about this because he wants to send Canadian, uh, specifically Ontario government employees, to see how they're giving out the vaccine in the U.S., see what's working, see what's not, uh, to help us with our distribution. This is actually really smart, uh, but people are upset because, oh, they're going to be crossing the border. The amount of negative news I've read about this is kind of mind-boggling because I don't want to just roll the dice on this, right? If we're saying, like, we're going to send 14 staff members to each to seven different states south of the border that are distributing the vaccine to analyze how they're doing it and get information on how it works. I'm willing to take that risk, that 14 people are going to go. Let's assume all 14 are going to get sick. They're going to come back. They're going to properly isolate, and maybe two or three people on this side of the border will get sick, okay? Let's put them on private jets. We're going to isolate them. Their wives might get sick when they come back. That's the wife's problem for marrying a politician. Literally, this is a fantastic idea. It, it's a, a, a fantastic way to ensure that we're doing something right. Like, why do you want to just guess? Why do people want him? They're like, oh, you could do this over the phone. It's different. You want those politicians and and not necessarily politicians, but they're going to be members of this distribution task force we have. You want them fully knowledgeable about what's going on, right? For example, the drug from Pfizer, the vaccine, has to be kept at extremely cold temperatures. Well, we need to see how other places are doing this because they're going to try different things and some are going to work and some aren't. And spoiled vaccines are not something that we can have. We can't have those doses going bad. We don't have enough as it is. So it's really important to understand what you're doing through and through. It's really easy to say, oh, you just give someone the vaccine. What do you need to go analyze what, how to do this for? Because it's literally the most important thing going on right now. <laughs> literally the most important thing that's happening. And we need to get this right. And if we need to send some people south of the border to meet with U.S. politicians and their different distribution task forces, if they can, th well, they can. They can meet safely, socially distance, uh, you know, see how things are happening in a safe and secure manner, come back here, properly quarantine and get tested and everything which of course they have the means to do there's and then, and then we can help all the other states or all the other uh, provinces here in Canada to do so with the information we learn and with what we try here it's a great idea that I think absolutely should happen and I don't think we should be seeing negative news coverage from it um, it's kind of a negative way to end the show but uh, which I don't like to do but yeah, that's uh that's that's going to be the end of the show, I guess. 
yeah, I probably should have planned that out a little bit better to finish on a positive note. But anyways, thank you all for listening. As always, I encourage you to take these discussions with your friends, your families, or with me, of course, over on social media. You can find all my links in the description to this podcast. Don't forget www.laughtolearnpodcast.com slash store to get all of your merchandise. Please share the podcast with your friends and family. Of course, take a screenshot, share it on your feeds uh, over on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. By the way, Instagram changed this morning or yeah, this, I think it was today. It might have been a little bit before, but I noticed it changed this morning and my heart like stopped. I was like, whoa, I do not know how to use Instagram again. But anyways, that's a side note. Uh, thank you guys all for tuning in. And until next time, keep your heads up, friends. Keep washing your hands, sanitizing your hands, wearing those masks, socially distancing, socially awkwardly distancing, of course. Keep on laughing and keep on learning. <laughs>